and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Welcome to Open 2.0. I'm your host, Quincy Tellis. On May 4th, 15th, Fannie Lou Hamer Freedom High School will host their fourth annual Peace Block Party. Joining us to share more about what we can expect are student government members Idiana Ramirez, Fernando Rosario, and spokesperson Ricardo Luciano. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Hello. Thanks. So what is it that's coming up May 15th, Ricardo? Well, May 15th is our fourth annual Please Peace Block Party, and uh, it's an event in, in, uh, in partnership with our school and Children's Aid Society to promote peace and anti-gang and gun violence throughout the community. Is there a lot of gang and gun violence around your school neighborhood? Unfortunately, the entire Morris Ania uh, neighborhood and, and community has been subject to uh, many different types of violences over the years. And uh, this event was started because of these such events. Mm -hmm. So how has this event affected you in, throughout the past three years? Well, um, it has affected me. It has made me want to like, oh, I can make a difference. Well, I could go out there and try to make my community a safer place for everybody to be in. It's this great opportunity that is given to us to promote this all around our community and the city to go out there and show teenagers just like us that they can make an impact in our community and in their community too. Right, I mean, to me it's just a day to celebrate peace and um, to unite the school because like Ricardo said, sadly, there's just too much violence, not only in our school, but in other communities. And I feel like it's an issue that needs to be addressed and it's, it, it can also be a day of fun. It doesn't have to be all seriousness, but we know the past and we know what's been going on, so we would like to take a day to celebrate it. So to us, it's just, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air. What type of activities will be going on at this event? Well, we, we will try to um, get the students and the, and the parents involved, and as well as staff members. We'll have a uh, wiffle ball. We'll have three-legged races. We'll do foosball, a three-point shootout. We'll also make a quilt. We do a, lot of, uh, we do a lot of pledges where we do a lot of artwork also. Our school is art-based, so we'll do uh, a lot of activities to keep the students busy. But it's also peace-oriented, of course. So... You're saying, so many people in your school community have put in effort? Yes, the, the school uh, works with uh, PTA, a Parent Teacher Association. They also work with uh, Children's Aid Society, which basically organizes the entire event. But it's mostly, uh, you could say, for the students and the school community. It's, it's kind of a, a day to um, celebrate peace as well as promote it. Along with students and the school community, who else will be there? Uh, staff members are welcome. Uh, some parents, some uh, speakers will also be there. Um, Idania or Ricardo can tell you who you attend. Well, um, we have different organizations that come in to talk to our students to what violence is and how does it affect them. And it's like these organizations tell our students, oh, you could reach us if you have any problem or you want to talk to us about your situation. And it's just Given, bringing in these organizations helps our community be safer because it gives our students a chance of we have somebody here to listen to you and that can help you through your problems. So has there, any, has there been any clash of energies in the planning process? Can you repeat your question? Has there been a clash of energies? Has there been a clash of personalities in the planning process or a struggle to get this thing put together? Oh no, not at all. I mean, this is uh, the Peace Block Party is an event that 
no matter where uh, the effort is coming from, whether it's from us, the students, or for high up in the administration, everyone's effort is given both equally and respected equally. This is an event that is uh, very much praised by not only all the students in the school, but everyone in, in our community and communities around us too. It's just, it's an event that everybody looks forward to and everyone put it, puts in their equal effort to make this happen. I think this event brings our community to together. Like as students, we are all excited about the Peace Blood Party and we just like, oh, what do you need to do or how can we help? It is this event that brings us together as a high school. Ricardo, has there been any tough situations that you had to go through? Or what was your specific role in getting this all together? Well, being the official spokesperson for our, our school student government, I mostly handle uh, the, the speakers and more of like the public speaking that occurs during the Peace Block Party. Uh, and throughout the four years that we've had the Peace Block Party, we have had speakers come in and talk to our class in sort of their role and how they have overcome their uh, role as prior being a part of this uh, borough who, that has a, a huge perception in, in uh, violence for people that don't live in the city. These speakers come in and they, and they give the class and our students and the community a sense that, well, you know, you're never too high up to, to sort of give back and give back acknowledgement and, and advice on how to overcome this violence. How did this start? Well, originally it started um, during midwinter uh, recess back in 2011, where we had a lot of uh, occurrences of violence around our neighborhood and around our community. And it really pained everyone. And it was just um, a lot of, you know, strenuous behavior. You know, it was very demoralizing, you could say. We had a lot of uh, close uh, people with the school, the students of the school, who were affected by this violence. So we decided to put, put this day together that very same year and plan the Peace Block Party. And we also managed to not only planned it, but we also managed to celebrate it that very same year that the violence occurred. Within how many months? Like five months? Yeah. Around that time. Yeah. Around, Around that, that time, time, yeah. I mean, it was, it, was, it was something that had occurred with no warning at all. And, and when it happened, uh, we came back from recess, from that recess, and, and put our minds together, both the students and the administration, and ultimately came up with this idea of the Peace Block Party. And it's also a day to commemorate those that have left because of violence, to remember them, to know that they were there and that they made an impact in us. And that impact is to make a difference for the next generation to not go through that that we went through. Fernando, did you see any change in the rest of your students, in the rest of your student body? Like, as you were in classes and after the first block party, were you thankful that, we, that you had the event? Very, very thankful. I mean, you could see the change all throughout the school. Like I said before, when the uh, incidents happened, everyone was very, you could say, moody. Everybody was down. We didn't really know how to react. But after we had the peace block party, after we had our promotion, and after we, have, uh, we emphasized our message, everyone changed. And it was, thank, uh, you know, thank God for the better, because we were able to do what we planned to do, and everyone was joyful because of it. Ricardo? Has, has there been any um, changes that you've seen? Uh, the, ma the major change that you can uh, think of right away is the popularity of the event. <clears throat> Many people have recalled how the first event went. It started off as a very small sort of a get together, but after that first year, the word gradually started spreading and us as part of student government were able to promote this event throughout many different teen summits and uh, events throughout the whole city, the whole state of New York. We actually went up to Albany uh, the past prior two years to, to advocate for this event. And, and over the course of, of the four years, the popularity has increased to un insurmountable heights. It, everyone's heard of it. Everyone wants to be a part of it. And that's exactly what our goal was. Um, has there been... Like, has there been a significant decrease in the violence or drug or gang use? Significantly, yes. I mean, uh, obviously, you, we wish, everyone wishes that we can just eliminate, eliminate the violence with one foul soup of a magic wand, but uh, unfortunately, uh, things doesn't work that way. Uh, we started the Peace Block Party and gradually violence has been decreasing, but uh, this is something that 
hopefully will continue on after we're gone because we're us three are seniors but uh we hope that this event is something that will continue on for the years to come and hopefully the the statistics will gradually decrease you say you're all seniors so you and you were you planned this when you were freshmen yes mm -hmm. indeed. yes so did you was there anything that you left behind to the current freshmen to try and make this even more better or making it more significant change than you have made? I think every year we try to go all out. Like we try to make the best possible. And I think the freshmen and sophomores have seen that. They have seen that we really dedicate our time to this, whether it's making the t-shirts, organizing the organizations to be there. And it shows them that we really do care and that this is part of our community. And I think it gives them that, well, I want to work hard to make this even better the next year and that really motivates us because you know all you want to do is always tr try your best to make it better the next year and I think that's a really positive thing that we're letting to them. Fernando do you see any current do you see any potential in your current freshmen to make the same change that you have made? Of course we have freshmen in student government and they see like Idania said they see the effort we put into this event they see that it really does matter to us and we really do care and hopefully we can leave the same impression on them. They see how hard we've worked for this party and they've also been involved in the planning, the organizing and the setting up of the event. So they'll definitely, they'll definitely take part of it and they have changed. Is there any way we can contact you if we have any more information on this event before tomorrow? Yeah, of course. You can reach out to any of us. You can reach out to our resource coordinators. You can reach out to Children's Aid Society. We're always on hold 24-7. The address is uh, 1021 Jennings Street. But you can't miss it. It's right off the Sheridan. Uh, if you guys, anybody wants to show up, everybody's welcome. This is an event that we uh, open the doors to everybody. It's from 12.30 to 3.30. And if you're thinking about showing up, you can come too. Everybody can come. This is an event that <clears throat> we really look forward to, to, to have the increase in, in population. Thank you for having Thank you for coming. Oh, no. Oh, thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. sharing all of this with you. <laughs> Stay tuned for more of 2.0. about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like my human is definitely into your human. Oh, look! I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your human's got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> oh, look, they're doing that thing where they put their arms around each other. She kicked up a leg. It's like in the movies. That's awesome. Looks like we're going to be hanging out a little bit more. <laughs>